another KSO Show debate series with Derek Young and Grant Flanders of K-State Online. Thank you for joining us from our YouTube channel. Well, actually from K-State Online because you are a subscriber. Well, no, this is the non-subscriber one, isn't it? So you're not a subscriber. This is a free well, video. It could be. Yeah, you, it could be. It could be. But, this is a, yeah, you could be a subscriber, but this is a free video on our YouTube we do do two other videos a week for straight subscribers. So if you want to check those out, you got to subscribe to K-State Online, part of the Rivals Network. But this one is uh, just for you guys' enjoyment out there. Just a little um, lighthearted debate series. Last week we did a little basketball action on who we thought would be maybe the best incoming freshman or incoming uh, player for the, the team next year. This, t this week we'll do, we'll do football debate. And I, I mean, I like debating positions a lot. I mean, we're probably going to do that a lot on this series this week. I think this is a good position to start with, uh, with football running back position. I mean, there's really two, I think, clear, clear choices at that spot. I mean, you could throw in a, a few others, but as far as young potential guys, I mean, we'll start with your choice, Do you want? Yeah, we're, we're basically talking who you think might have the best season in the backfield, uh, whether that – means most productive or the best player, it's kind of up to you to kind of uh, decide that. Um, and, and we're obviously just going to pick one player here, but it's clear that Kansas State's, you know, preference is to play three or four running backs uh, in one game. So this isn't really a sign of, you know, who's going to play more or or who's going to get the lion's share of the carries because they're probably going to be pretty div divided pretty evenly amongst three or four guys just like it was a year ago. Um, Obviously, some of the some of the choices are probably pretty well known. I, my choice will be he'll be a redshirt freshman is Joe Irvin, and that's mostly because if not for a little you know you know a hiccup here and there and, and probably some injury related concerns that he had at various times, I don't think he would have redshirted last year if everything would have been clean for him when it comes to you know everything you know, away from the field and injury-wise. I, th I think he would not have redshirted, and I think he probably, you know, becomes a pretty vital uh, part of that rotation we saw last year that also included Jordan Brown and James Gilbert just because at the running back position, you're going to run into injuries from time to time. And, and so there's going to be opportunity for, for guys lower on the depth chart to really make a dent. And he would have done that uh, in, a big, in a bigger way than he actually did had he been healthy the entire time. Um, I remember, I think he had a touchdown against Kansas. He just, he played a decent amount, still got the four games or less so he could maintain his red shirt. He was also, you know, the, probably the first true freshman just in general that received rave reviews from the coaching staff. Um, that was back in fall camp. Uh, he was the first, not just first running, true freshman running back, first true freshman to really seem to, you know, make a jump or, or, or impress the coaches that at least flashed to his teammates and stuff like that. And then, of course, Jacardia Wright, you know, came in, came in after that and, and did the same thing. But Urban was first, and I don't know if he, he lets go of that, you know, mantle or, um, I guess, spot on the depth chart if he doesn't get hurt. So I guess Jacardi Wright has a lot of uh, traits that make a running back special, and his potential might be a little bit higher than Joe Urban. I'm not saying it isn't. But I think when we're looking at this year and, and you kind of think about how they approached last season with those two backs, um, I think the safer or at least maybe the wiser uh, pick here is Joe Irvin in terms of someone that uh, is probably a little bit better, you know, than people think and probably on that same platform that folks hold Jacardia right to. So I really like Joe Irvin and his chances to have a pretty big season at K-State, assuming he stays healthy, because obviously, you know, he had limited exposure to the field last year and still got banged up a little bit. So with durability, you know, we'll have to see how, how that fits into the equation. But all things being equal, I, I really like Joe Urban's chances at being, you know, one of the primary guys and probably one of the, the more effective one of the three or four that they use. Um, I think Harry Trotter is going to play, and he's going to carve out a role that's important to the team, just like he did a year ago. Uh, but I just don't see him, you know, passing up Joe Irvin in terms of production and explosiveness and, and effectiveness as a ball carrier. But, I mean, Trotter will still have a role. But I, I really do like Joe Irvin's chances the most. I'm going to go with the other redshirt freshman, the guy you talked about the most there, besides Joe Irvin and Jacardia Wright. I think – 
as you said, he was a guy that didn't get a start as, as early as Urban did last season. But when he did get his shot, I mean, I thought he was slow going at first. It seemed like he didn't have much um, – I, I didn't see a lot of skill set, but as he kept getting comfortable in the offense, getting more, getting more touches, I saw some more explosion. And I mean, he's a different type of back, but I think he could fit in that role that a James Gilbert played. You know, more of an every down type back, especially if he got more in shape um, and, and and continued to get stronger and bigger. I think he could be. I think he will be the number one guy above Joe Irvin. I think Irvin ends up being that that Jordan Brown type secondary back, third down back guy that you want back there um, uh, pass catching or um, breaking big plays. I do think Urban has that game breaking speed, which is very huge. I, I think he's going to be good too. I think they're going to be rich in that area because of those two um, for the, for the next few years. I, I think Wright brings that, like I said, I think we saw how they use Gilbert. I felt like Gilbert was that mostly sought, sought after, as that number one guy last season with Brown as that number two when they were both healthy. Um, I mean, that very interchangeable, but you, you feel like you saw, you saw Gilbert as the, the bell cow. And I think you could see that with Jarkadia, right? And then you have Joe Irvin as the game breaker. You brought up Harry Trotter. I guess, would you think the fourth guy would be like a Deuce Vaughn or who, who would you think is, a, is the fourth option in that? Yeah, th that'll be an interesting part, too. Um, Deuce Vaughn is probably the freshman that I would kind of lean on the most for a fourth guy. Uh, but Tyler Burns is mm -hmm. still expected to come back, and I think it would be hard to take those snaps away from him as the fourth guy. Um, and Deuce Vaughn's probably, at least early in his career, is probably going to be more of a niche player, more of a role player where, you know, he's going to be in probably in specific circumstances doing, you know, specific things in terms of a contribution. So just running back in general, I think Deuce Juan probably has a chance to see a few snaps uh, right away, at least more so than Keon Mosey, I would imagine, in the early game. But I don't think it's going to be in any considerable or significant role, not in year one, but maybe, you know, after that. So that, that's why I would probably side with Tyler Burns in that scenario. And I'm not – and I know I picked Joe Irvin and you picked Jacardia Wright, and I really feel good about Joe Irvin and Jacardia Wright. But all these stats are probably going, at the end of the day, be, be pretty evenly split up uh, just because they like to do that. And you also have to consider the injury factor that's probably a little bit more prevalent when it comes to the running back position. So I still, to this, to this point right now, I would not be surprised if we saw Tyler Burns even more this year than we saw last year. So you're picking Joe Irvin for production. I'm picking Jacardia right. I guess does it'll be that pretty mean, pretty close between pretty, those two. Exactly. I think it's pretty close as well. And you you brought it up. They're going to be pretty even in snap counts. But if you had to pick one, who who would you say? And this I mean this does not have to, have to do with production necessarily because of you yeah. know, after the carry and stuff. Who gets the most carries out of those two? The most carries out of those two, I think you, you maybe. It's a tough question. <laughs> I, I, I want to say Joe Irvin because I think that they'll count they'll want to count on him more than Jacardia right, at least in the early going. But I also it is a twelve game question that you're asking and Irvin's durability has probably been more in question than right. So then it may then you know, you start to consider uh what right might be able to do in the right situation at that point. It's a really tough question. If assuming all is healthy, I would say Irvin. Yeah. How much? How much different are these backs? Uh, they're pretty. Uh, to, to be honest, their style is probably not a whole lot different. But the the difference is their size. Jacardi Wright's clearly a little bit taller, um, a little bit different strider to than Jacar or than Joe Urban. Jacardi Wright's a little bit of a longer strider because he's a longer player, and a probably. But they're both really physical backs. I mean, just because Joe Urban's small doesn't mean he's not really a physical back. That kind of reminds you of a bell cow type running back. Mm -hmm. Now, neither one's probably going to be a bell cow for K-State because they like to divide the snaps out so much. But in terms of style, their running style, their gait is a little bit different. They stride differently. Um, but they both are – I mean, Joe Urban being small as he is, he's still a between-the-tackles kind of running back still. Um He's probably a little bit more explosive in the first few steps. And and I do wonder if Jacardi Wright might end up being faster in the long game than him, though. Well, and then if that happens, I win this discussion as 
<laughs> as Darcadia Wright ends with the best career at K-State over Jordan. That's yeah, cool. I mean, I still think, yeah, it'll be a pretty good – it's a pretty good debate, and it'll be a pretty good thing to watch between Urban and Wright because they're going to be in the same class. And it makes you wonder, you know, does Thomas Grace ever get to see the – or does he get to see the field this year too? He redshirted last year just like – they had four rush, four freshman running backs at one point last year. Um, so that'll be an interesting thing to see if there's other players that end up seeing the field as well and what kind of contribution or how much they'll be counted on yep. in, in that way. But I, yeah, there's something, it's kind of the gut instinct I have that, that Viking Gill is going to have a pretty big season just because of the way he finished last year and the fact that he was at one point considered to be the wide receiver that had the best spring football year ago. So yep. uh, there's a gut instinct about me that Viking Gill is going to have a really good season and, He's not going to be – I'm not saying he's going to have the production that Dalton Schoen had throughout his career, but I think he's going to settle into a role similar to that where he is going to all of a sudden people are like, man, where did Waikiki Gill come from? And I think it's going to be reminiscent of what we saw from him at the latter part of the season. And that same gut instinct is I'm starting to build up a little bit about what Tyler Burns uh, – how much he'll, he'll be into this offense at some point this year. Well – that was another debate series every Sunday. I mean, if, if, any, if any subscribers have any ideas of what we want to debate, um, K-State sports related, obviously, uh, let us know. I mean, if, even if it's not K-State sports related, maybe we'll do it. But it'd have to be some, at least some something. Um, but, yeah, every Sunday we'll be trying to do this. Thanks to Derek Young. I'm Grant Flanders for K-State Online. Don't forget to tell your friends. That's right.